In day-to-day -day life, we use a decimal number system. But unfortunately, there's not enough logic levels in our digital circuits to directly rep represent uh, numbers using decimal system in digital circuits. But instead, we normally use a binary number system. Now, another system we often come across is called hexadecimal. But in all cases, so decimal, binary, hexadecimal, in all these cases, the numbers are represented what's, uh, using what's known as a place value notation. So each column of this number has got a different weight. So we know decimal is a base 10 number system. This probably comes around because they've got the 10 uh, fingers. So it makes it easier to count. So now each column in a number is a successive power of 10. So we've got our units column, our tens column, our hundreds column and so on. So because of these, because it's a base 10 system, it means we, we need 10 different uh, symbols, which are called digits. You know, so each, each symbol is used to represent a different number in this base 10 system. So we're just used to these n normal um, Roman numbers, you know, from uh, zero up to nine. So these are just the symbols that we use to represent these different uh, digits. So we take the number 2573, for example, we just know just by looking at it that this is 2573. We actually think about why that is. So we start from the right hand side, that's the least significant digit. So we'll call that digit zero, digit one, digit two, digit three. Now each column is worth a particular power of 10 and it just depends on the digit number. So this column is actually 10 to the power zero, which we know is just one. This column is 10 to the power one. So obviously 10, 10 to the power two gives us a hundred and 10 to the power three gives us a thousand and so on. So depending on the digit number, you just raise 10 to the power of that number and that gives you how much, you know, the weight of that column, if you will. So in case, just to work out what that number then is, it's just a case of multiplying the actual digit by the weight. So we know we've just got three times one also gives us three and we've got seven times ten gives us seventy five times a hundred it's obviously five hundred and then two times a thousand gives us two thousand it's just a case of adding all these numbers up to give us obviously a two thousand five hundred and seventy three So the maximum number that can be stored in a given number of digits is given by 10 to the power n minus uh, 1. So for four, if we've got four digits, the maximum number we can represent is 9,999. So we know that if you've got like a byte lock or something with four separate digits, you can go from 000 all the way up to 9999. So we just consider only positive numbers for the time being. You know, the minimum number is 0. And then the range is just given by the minimum number subtracted from the maximum number. So for this case, with four digits, the range is 9,999. Now we'll look at binary. And binary just works on exactly the same level, but now this is just a base two number system. So now each column is just going to be worth is a successive power of two. So instead of units, tens, hundreds, thousands, we've got units, twos, fours, eights, sixteens, thirty twos, and so on. So because it's only base two, we only need the two different symbols. So we just use just the zero and the one symbol. So we call these binary digits or bits. So that's the word, that's where the word bits come from. So we just use these two um, symbols to represent the bits. And obviously we know we've seen already with digital logic levels, this is ends up being perfectly compatible with a kind of zeros and ones or true or false that have been um, describe into our digital circuits. So we'll look at an example now. So this now is um, obviously 1001. Zero, zero, one. So this is in binary. So this works in the same way. So we we'll call it bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, bit 3. So then we've just got 2 to the power 0, 2 to the power 1, 2 to the power 2, 2 to the power 3. So this gives us the weight of each column. So this is our units, our 2s, our 4s, 
uh, right, then we'd obviously get 16, 32 and so on. So that's why when you buy a computer, you probably notice you always have 4 gigs of RAM, 8 gigs, 16 gig of RAMs. You know, you never get 17 gigs of RAM or 3 gigs of RAM. It's always these powers of uh, 2. And it just works in exactly the same way now. So, so to work out the, you know, the value of this uh, decimal, uh, binary number 1001, we just have to do... Um, what we did previously, so now we've just got 1 times 1 is obviously just 1 and we've got 0 uh, times 2 that's obviously 0 we've got 0 times 4 which again is just 0 then we've got 1 times 8 is just 8 so just add these up and that gives us 9 so the binary value 1001 is just 9 in decimal. So again, we can work out the maximum number that we can store in a given number of bits, and that's 2 to the power n minus 1. So for the decimal, it was 10 to the n minus 1, because that was a base 10 system. But now binary is base 2, so it's 2 to the power n minus 1. So for 4 bits, the maximum number we can represent is just 15, so 16 minus 1. So again, considering all the positive numbers for the time being, the minimum number is zero, what's obviously going to be zero, 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 zero. And you could probably guess the maximum 15 is just going to be one, 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 one. So here we've got one plus two plus four plus eight gives us 15. So our range, you know, for four bits, the range is 15. So when we're writing out, it can be quite complicated when you write, um, not complicated, confusing, sorry. When you're writing out big long binary numbers, it takes more bits to represent the number than it does uh, decimal digits because of the base is smaller. So we often group these binary numbers into a series of four bits just to make just to um, make it easier to read. Now in the group, if you've not got a group of um you know if you've got less than four bits, we often just add leading zeros to pad it out. So we're not so three in binary is just one one because that's obviously one plus two gives us three so we'd have to normally write that just as zero zero one one so we just pad that out into a series of four bits now we often call these four bits a group of four bits we call it a nibble so the maximum value that we can store in a nibble is one 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 which we know is 15 in um, decimal so a group of eight bits is actually called a byte You've, you've probably uh, come across that before with mega megabytes and so on. And we talk about file sizes. So eight bits, you know, the biggest value you can store in a byte is two five five. So if you if you worked at all the powers of all eight ones, it would add up to two five five. So the word you can see, so eight bits is a byte, and four bits is half of a bite, so that's like a nibble. So when you take a nibble of a sandwich, you can have a full bite, or if you just have a smaller bite or a half-sized bite, you might call that a nibble. So in hexadecimal, this is just um, an extension of the same idea, but this is now a base 16 number. So now, um, we actually need more symbols. So we've got the 10 symbols we have in decimal, but we still need, because it's base 16, we need some more symbols still. So we use the symbols A to F. So these add on, um, so these represent 10 to 15. So these are the so decimal values of each of these symbols. Because we're not, we're for base 16, we need 16 different symbols. So just add A to F. So you probably come across these on your, on your computer. So now look at this example. So beef. So beef is a hexadecimal number. So again, we've just got the different hexadecimal digits, zero to three in this case. So now the, each column is just a power of 16. We can see so these columns get much higher value because it's base 16. So in binary, this column's only worth eight. And in decimal, it's worth a thousand. So with hexadecimal, it's 4,096. So it's just the same thing we did before. We just have to look at the values of each um, 
each column and multiply it by the value of the hexadecimal digit. So here, F is actually worth 15, E is 14, and B is 11. So you just add those up like we've done before, and it gives you the value. So the, the hexadecimal value beef is equivalent to 48,879 in decimal. Again, the same way, the maximum number that can be stored in the given number of hexadecimal digits is 16 to the power n minus 1. So you can see, just with fewer digits now, the bigger the base, you can fit in a bigger number, you know, with the same number of digits. So for four hexadecimal, for four hexadecimal digits, we can actually represent up to 65,535. And again, only positive numbers, the minimum is going to be the zero. So the range is the same as the maximum value of 65535. So these are the different values as for a nibble, so four binary bits. So you can see in decimal that gives us 0 to 15. Next hexadecimal we go from 0 to F. And binary we go from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1. So you can see, you can start uh, seeing the pattern emerge, what we saw in the truth tables. So for example, these these column, it goes 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. So that's obviously when you write the numbers down, you know, we know we've got odd even, odd even, odd even, odd even numbers and so on. So even numbers, they don't have a, anything in the unit. And it's only the odd numbers where you need a, a value in the unit column. Then the next one, and so on, 0, 0, 1, 1. So this pattern we saw before, what we what was useful for a Make, make it easier to resolve the truth table. So this is where it comes from. It's just a binary representation of the numbers. So here we've got four zeros, four ones, and then on this next lot, eight zeros, eight ones, and so on. So that pattern just repeats, and it comes about for this way that we represent uh, binary numbers. Just a quick, um, quick slide about the notation we use. So we use different conventions when we're writing out numbers in these different bases because it can obviously get quite confusing. If you see the number um, 101, is that a binary number? Is it a decimal number? Is it hexadecimal? We don't know. So you often see the base written as a uh, subscript. So here it's decimal, base 10, 2, base uh, binary obviously, and then hexadecimal, base 16. So often you, you can you, uh, you see letters as well, so D, B, or H. But particular for uh, hexadecimal numbers, we often use this 0x prefix. So you write 0x, and that'll be a hexadecimal value, beef, but we've put um, 0x in front of it. So you need to be wary when you look at a number. You can normally tell what base it is just from the context of the, um, you know, the application, but you do need to be wary. You know, and it's you know it is useful just to write the prefix down. Uh, it's obviously a subscript down just to make it uh, obvious uh, what base that it is you're talking about.